Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! The textbook definition for solute would be not terribly helpful. The substance dissolved in a given solution, so if you already know what you're doing, the definition is perfect. The definition for a solvent, then, is also not terribly helpful. So again, if you already know what you're doing, if you already know what solutions are and how they work, then this definition is great. But if you don't, then you need something more practical. And having a more practical definition is going to help anyway. So let's try this again. How to identify the solute and how to identify the solvent. First, the solute is the substance that isn't the solvent. The solvent then is, and at this point a lot of you are thinking, the substance that isn't the solute, but then that would be a circular argument and that's not helpful. So the solute is whatever isn't the solvent. You're only going to have one solvent in a given solution. So identifying the solvent is more helpful than identifying the solute. The solvent is I'm going to give you four practical definitions for how to figure out what the solvent is. The first is probably the most common, at least in inorganic chemistry it is. If you have water, water is the solvent. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Water is almost always the solvent if water is present. As a matter of fact, I can't really think of a single situation where water is present but isn't the solvent. The solvent is the substance present in the greater quantity, so whatever there's more of, that's going to be the solvent. The reason for that is you have to have solvent forming cages around the solute to keep the solute separated from each other. Now when we talk about greater quantity, we're not talking about grams. Quantity in chemistry is measured in moles. So make sure that you're looking at the number of moles and not the number of grams. If one thing has a greater mass than another thing, that doesn't necessarily mean that the thing with the greater mass is the solvent. You have to look at their molar masses too. You can look at the grammar of the problem as well. If the word says blank is dissolved in blank, then the thing that it was dissolved in is the solvent. The thing that is dissolved is the solute. So you can look at the grammar of the problem if you have a word problem, and that will help you identify the solvent there as well. If you have Kool-Aid, which would be a solid powder, and you have water, which is a clear liquid, and you mix the Kool-Aid into the water, you get a solution. That solution doesn't look like a solid powder, it looks like a clear liquid. Now it's still red, but it looks like a clear liquid. So the phase of the solvent matches the phase of the solution. Now this is a more practical definition for the real world. So if you've got uh, two things and you mix them together in the real world, that's usually an easier way to identify the solvent than the solute. Once you know what the solvent is, then you can use that information to find the solute. You can have several things dissolved in one solvent. Seawater, for example, is sodium ions and chloride ions and magnesium ions and sulfate ions and oxygen and a whole bunch of other stuff all dissolved in the same solvent, water. So what you want to do is you want to figure out who the solvent is. And then when you know that, you can use that information to find the solute. 